Hello, I'd like to call to order the Board of Education meeting. It's May 22nd, 2019, and um, let's all stand for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. ladies for taking your time and gentlemen thank you very much um, and we're excited to hear your reports and Mr. Shipman if you want to get started that'd be great sure it's my last report before I vacate the premises <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you for supporting us in everything we do and, and letting us support you. Um, I guess we will start. We'll just go around the table. Uh, I'm going to introduce Emily and Kara as next year's me. Um, so Emily Woods and Kara Mack are next year's council president. So Emily, start with what, where your kids, who your kids are, or where they are. Um, I have Maya, who will be entering sixth grade at the middle school for the first time next year. And I have Zach, who will be one of the fourth graders staying at Chihuahua. And my daughter McKenna will be a freshman next year. And then I have um, a rising sixth grader, Haley, who's leaving Central this year. And Kara's an outgoing Central president. Yes. So Dan Foley, the other outgoing Central president. I have Jack, who will be a seventh grader at the middle school. Bridget, who will be a fifth grader at the middle school. And Maggie, who will be a first grader at the middle school. They got the special one because the central's not anymore. Yeah. Sure. So everybody else has to introduce themselves. <laughs> I'm Lauren Champ. I'm one of the co-presidents at Chippewa Elementary. And my boys, who happen to be sitting right back there, one is going to be in third grade at Chippewa, and the other is going to kindergarten in the fall. Mm -hmm. And I'm Terry Parisi, and I have Mikey, who's going into sixth grade next year, and Dominic, who's staying at Chippewa, and will be in fourth. And a two-year-old. I'm Carrie Ely, and I have twin boys that are in going into seventh grade, and also a daughter who's going into sixth grade. So I, all my kids will be at the middle school next year, which will be very nice for me. I'm Denise Golick, I'm co-president of middle school. I have a soon-to-be eighth grade boy and a soon-to-be sixth grade <coughs> Um, Christy Couch, I am the president at Hilton, and I have Tessa, who will be in fourth grade at Hilton still next year, and Cora, who will be going into first grade at Hilton. Hi, I'm Mary Green. I'm going to be taking over for Christy at Hilton. So I have Owen, who's going into sixth grade next year. Um, my son Adam will be going into third grade at Hilton. I have a daughter, Lila, going into first grade at Hilton. And then I have a future B who's three. So. I'm Sassy Niancek. I'm a co president or will be incoming co president at Highland. I have one child, Benjamin, and he will be going to second grade. Shannon Latek. I'm one of the would be going to be co presidents at Highland. I have um, one child, Alexis, who is going to be a third grader at Highland, and Luke is going to be a second grader. I'm Sarah Schultz. I am also co-president at Highland mm -hmm. currently, and again next year there'll be three of us. Yes. Um, and I have a soon-to-be fourth grader, Lucas, and a soon-to-be second grader. Gosh, that's my baby that big, but um, her name is Adeline. Hi, I'm Sarah Beatty, and I am a current co-president at Highland. And I have a daughter, Lila, who will be going into fifth grade, and Lexi, who will be staying at and I'm Philip Shipman. I'm the outgoing council president. I have Jasmine, who will be an eighth grader. Grant, who will be one of the fifth grade middle schoolers. He is not excited. <laughs> Actually, I think Jasmine's less excited than me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Aurora will be a third grader, and my typical meeting runner is very mad that I wouldn't bring her tonight. She's three years old and will be a future as well. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves for anybody that doesn't know you guys? I'm Joelle. <laughs> I have two children. They're 20 and 23. <laughs> 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 and 
and I'm Alan Kramer. I have three kids, but only one still at the district. He's in eighth grade with Kara's daughter. And I'm Mark Dosen. I'm a proud graduate of this district, 1982, and I have three children who also graduated from the Morris district. So I have a Lexus. My name is Kathleen Mack, and I've been on the board of nine years. I'm related to Kara Mack. There's no more Max. We're, we're, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Um, Alexis is graduating <coughs> from Oregon, and um, yeah, she's going to be attending a different college to finish her softball career, which I'm now I said. And then um, I have Ethan, who's graduating this year, and he's going to go to Miami. And I have um, Chelsea, who's in ninth grade, and she plays softball as well. That's about it. And it was really controversial when we had co-presidents. I was the first like year that they started the co-presidents, which was a long time ago, 10 years. And it was brought to the PSO Council, and it's very, and I'm so happy to see, because it's like such a good way to delegate. So I will say, on say. that note, when she was president, she broke me into PSO <laughs> before I was in the district. <laughs> She said, you're moving to the district. Why don't you become treasurer? Oh, I didn't yeah. like that. I yeah. like, okay. And I've never gotten out. Yeah, I've never gotten out. Hi, I'm Fred Peterson. And uh, my daughters are 45 and 43. Um, none of them went to school here, but I do have seven daughters and sisters that went to actual five schools, including my sister that's two years younger than me, who graduated in 1966. And I'm Mike Ziegler, uh, and two of my four children graduated from here, and my baby's 30, so. <laughs> but don't worry about your baby, man. Yeah, like <laughs> 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 no, no matter what they tell you, it always goes fast. Uh, I have two, uh, Jeff Hall, I'm the treasurer uh, here in the district. I have uh, actually two sons, one's 22 and 20. Uh, we just brought one home from, you know, as a graduate of Bowling Green, and, the youngest is a sophomore at the uh, University of Cincinnati. Thank you all. So, in front of everybody, hopefully. It is our recap this year. It has the outcome. This year's presidents and next year's presidents that we all just met each other. Um, our big highlights, looking at membership, you'll see that there are some holes in here, and that's just because some of the schools don't break down the difference between single or family. Overall, our membership is up this year. <coughs> um, so that, that's a great thing. We're actually up 21% this year. And I'm blaming the middle school with their awesome membership drive this year using online because you guys were where the largest gain was by far. Well, Everybody we'll else was. Some help. <laughs> we'll get that attention now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A great job. Everybody else seemed to be up 10, 12 members. You guys were up like. So no. we'll take it. Do it again next year. Uh, so I also like to point out that we had almost 300 staff members join the PSO this year. Which I don't know how many staff members we have in the district, but 300 is a pretty good number of teachers and other staff members that are supporting us <coughs> monetarily as well as with their volunteering actions. Talking about volunteering, when you flip over to the second page, the number of volunteer hours we put allegedly 15,809 and a half hours in. And I say allegedly because we all know that we didn't track all those hours. I know that there are people in this room that turned in and they said I worked 200 hours this year and I know that I saw them at least four or 500 at the schools. So that number is probably much larger, but looking at it, we are still <coughs> up 200 hours of reported hours over last year. So we've done more with more people involved, which is amazing. Fundraising wise, we raised just shy of $93,000 this year. And a, there is a plus next to Central because on top of that, Central also took several thousand dollars in Scholastic Bucks, which goes back to the media centers. So that's extra money that the district doesn't have to come up with. So when you add all that in across the schools, I didn't ask specifically for that, Kara just shared that. We were probably over $100,000 this year in funds that are able to help the district. And then we paid out fifty nine thousand plus dollars and I say plus because again back to Carrie and Denise our awesome middle school presidents they started as you well know the middle school auditorium renovation fund so some of these gift numbers don't include what what's been earmarked for that 
So that's why there's such a big discrepancy. And we raised this much, spent this much, because a lot of it's going into a bank account specifically <coughs> earmarked for that project. Um, the, the main things, I'm not going to read all of these, but the main things that have been purchased um, at the high school, they bought four water filter fountain bottle things. I don't really understand how it works, but apparently it's the next best thing. Um, and one family decided apparently that's their thing every year is to do one charitable thing in the community. So one family said, how much are they and wrote a check for another one, So, which is, which is pretty awesome. Um, the other thing that Megan wanted noted, and she, she's homesick with strep, so she didn't want to spread it to all of you guys, um, was that After Prom had the highest participation. They had over 220 students come to After Prom, which apparently is amazing. My oldest is eighth grade, so we're still hopefully a decade away from having to worry about that. Um, the middle school put all of their gifts towards the, the middle school auditorium. They chose that that was the biggest area of need in the building. Um, Central. Did, did several different things because the building's closing. So typically Central buys fifth grade, the fifth grade class as a whole a t-shirt that becomes a gym shirt in sixth grade, but then they also had to do it for fourth grade because they're also going to the middle school. So that was one extra thing that they did. Um, they also chose to send, spend some of their money down at the end to help next year with the fourth grade going back to elementary. That's a 25% increase in kids staying at the buildings. So they chose to spend some money there to give back to the K-3 to buildings to help offset the fact that the grade is staying. Um, and then also the middle school auditorium, Chippewa assemblies, lots of things for the kids, Earth Week, the one school, one book. Highland did a great job of telling me everything that you guys spent on. <laughs> I, no, I appreciate it, because a couple of them I'm like, okay, how do I pull out I know you guys all spent stuff, I just couldn't quickly find it today when I got around to putting your reports together. Um, so they just did a lot of stuff that will help the kids learn easier, better, and more cool stuff, as well as Hilton also. You guys put in a water fountain, so at the same time <coughs> you put in, you just got a better dollar amount? Yes, we did. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then you guys always do a great job keeping your courtyards and gardens and things going. So overall, like I said, membership is up 21%. Volunteer hours are up 200 hours, just in reporting. We're up $10,000 this year in fundraising, which was a $9,000 increase. So in my two years, we've gone up $19,000 in fundraising. Um, and gifts this year were up $5,000 in expenditures, which doesn't tell the whole story, like I said, because of the middle school auditorium fund that's not integrated into the spending. We had a great year. I couldn't have asked for a better year overall. Um, we've started looking towards the future with closing down Central, also going through some of those headaches of what does that mean for PSO. So we started looking at some of those membership guidelines and revising bylaws and looking at what does it mean to close a building. So it's been a good trial run. Dan and Carol were great to work with for that, for when we do have to combine three buildings into, into one. Um, they said we updated the membership guidelines. We cl we closed down our Facebook to be members only instead of anybody can get on there, anybody can post and all this stuff. We, we've closed ranks a little bit because it was the right thing to do. Um, we're always looking for volunteers. I say that with a grain of salt as I have three co-presidents sitting here. Jen Jen Jennifer Dezina and Julie Gardato couldn't get out of the middle school. They were there for five years, and you guys have three people knocking on the door to get in. So thank you very much to you three. But we are getting more people in. We're getting a broader spectrum of people, which is helping reduce burnout. And I think that's great. And speaking of those leaders, I want to thank Christy for putting three years into Hilton. Megan, who's not here, she came back. She was council president before me for a couple of years, a year <coughs> off, and now she's coming back next year for her second year at the high school. And then I want to thank you guys for all your hard work towards making the middle school better because that's an entire district thing. You guys are the middle school presidents, but you touch every student in the district every year. So thank you. Um, I have a little something for each of you outgoing. And yes, if you're returning, you still get one. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I had very little to do with this. My wife did it. They're the same concept as the ones in your basket. <laughs> What's that? feet bumper things and then she creates with, with permanent vinyl to put those on there. challenging times these last couple of years together, the board and, and the PSO, and, and you brought, you know, um, to the forefront the Facebook page, mm -hmm. and the big initiative of this district has not only been mental health, but to get some of the bullying under control, and we continue to, or, you know, um, monitor and social media and how that plays a role in it. So I, I'd like to know, you know, now that you've made it close, this was the first year you did that. How did that? How did that go? Did it make a difference? I mean, I am on a couple of the PSOs, but do you feel like things did take a turn? And, and I'll leave the, it to you guys. They yeah. they run their pages, well, like so to, I'm I'd on like all to of hear them. But back from you, you know, did it did it get better? The thing that made a difference for us is that we started approving <coughs> posts before they were posted. And actually, Jen and Julie started that last year, which is you know when you close the Facebook page, I think, also. Towards the end of last year, yeah. we yeah. started the um, process. So that we were able to take a look at the content and you know make sure it fit in the guidelines that we had all created last summer together, and then post it and monitor it. OK. So if we found that there was anything that might be inappropriate comment-wise, we Maybe so you, one. so you're at the middle school. Did everybody do it that way, or everybody just? We tried to. Chip was it to that way this year. We we did. Did. Yeah. And yeah. I think if we thought it was going to be a, a post that would invoke a lot of strong opinions, we just put no. You couldn't comment on it. Mm -hmm. So it was just you. You need to go to your own Facebook page and mm -hmm. whine right. and cry and whatever. Right. So mm -hmm. just yeah. made it, it just. Central I think it was a, yeah, because it did make it, you know, to say, like, you know, this isn't within our guidelines, you know, so right. it kind of, whereas maybe people might have felt attacked or, you know, that, well, why can't other people, it was nice to be able to say, like, these are the rules, this is a private group, you know, it is what it is, you know, and feel free to post it on your private page. Right. So that was nice to be able to kind of have that support. Central, we left ours open, and there was one issue that started, and the person apologized and deleted it. Somebody said something to them, and they said sorry. Took it off and put it on their private page. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, no. so it. But we had the rules posted right up the front, yeah. up the top. So the okay. very first thing you saw is the announcement. Yeah. Um, the so before so you post it, you, theoretically, you should have seen. So you cleaned half. Like when when the year started, you 
took everybody out of your email banks and, and everybody had to re yes. yes. Okay. Which kind of helped because some of the people weren't even there anymore. So right. it was kind of right. a good thing. And then once you did that and so this is the procedure do you feel like this works? Yeah, every every fall after membership closes, like we'll give a leniency of a few the few months in the beginning of the year where people are switching buildings or getting ready to pay their dues. Right. Once that closes our membership chair went through and deleted everybody who had not paid for the school year. Our cutoff is November 1st. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Did everybody have people pay to be part of their group? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. As well? Yeah. Yeah. We had a little bit of feedback with some people that were unhappy with that portion of it, so that was a little, that was... The collecting of fees to be well, in. yeah, and, you know, there was a little a little bit of feedback in the at fall and stuff, some parents that were not happy with that rule, but then, you know, the reminder is that it is a PSO Facebook page, so in order to be a member of the Facebook group, you need to be a PSO member. So it was, I guess it was kind of surprising that some people were, you know, so that was that was a little different, but we navigated it and, you know, just kept right. posting it and just kept going back and, you know, we pinned the post too and occasionally we're just, you know, the reminder. So that was, that was a little surprising. Well, do you think it was because they thought they weren't getting access to information and you had to pay to get access to information, possibly? Yes, was that parent, specifically. Once yeah. we explained that it comes out in the principal's email, it comes sure. home in their mm -hmm. red folder, it was a new parent. They just didn't understand. I don't think they were checking their kids' backpacks, to be honest, but, sure. um, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, if you see something, if you see something not working, Obviously, you operate <coughs> on your own, but it's a good model for other, you know, club and entities that we have. And I, at least what I saw, I saw like a dialogue between parents with questions, mm -hmm. but I didn't see, uh, you know, the stuff. And I don't think you did from the year before, where it was getting malicious, setting a bad example for our kids, and what we were trying to accomplish. Did, what about? I also heard one thing about like their Fifth Amendment, that their you know, right to speak. And did you hear anything about that? I, I think I had that in Milton. Comment. You did. Yeah. Yeah. And I told her she could was obviously very free to post whatever she wanted to on her personal page. Sure. But, mm -hmm. but this is the PS. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Well, that's good feedback. Um, so I want to thank you guys for everything you have done. I've done exactly what you've done, as I'm sure a lot of these people up here have. And it is hours and hours and hours of work and dealing with constant conflict. So I know, and, and you know, and good good things as well. But I know what you take on, and I want to tell you that it, we are so thankful for you. And please never feel that we're not. And the fact that you stood up as leaders—that's the hard part. And we're thankful that you are willing to be the face for your PSOs, um, the initiatives. You know, I'm looking at the auditorium and the amount of work and that piece of literature you put together. I mean, that that's impressive, and it's something beyond our means. And some people would say, "Well, that's you know, that's the district's job to do that." Well, we can't do all that. I mean, we want to, but we can't. And so the things that you're doing are the things that, like teacher pay teacher, you know, giving them startup funds. You know, teachers that they spend so much of their own money, and for you to do stuff like that. I'm sure they thank you, but I see how kind you treat the teachers here, and of course we're thankful for that. But I, I you know, I want to make sure you know that it's not going unseen by everybody in this community, and the fact that people, your um, people are joining at the rate that they're joining the PSL. We were, uh, we were dying uh, about 10 years ago, and people were burdened. And we, you know, that's where the co-president idea came in. And I see now that it's thriving and you're, you're getting major stuff done. <coughs> I'm thankful. And I know that this community is thankful for you. So thank you for your time for coming today. And thank you for all you've done for this district. And, and if the board members have any questions or input. I just want to say, as the representative from the board to the PSO, I just get blown away every month by how much you guys are doing. Just, you know, and it's, it's hard for me to sit here. I, I, can, I can either do a half hour speech on what you're doing, or a five minute, or a couple minutes speech saying you're doing a lot. <laughs> but I've really enjoyed it. Um, I 
I just so I am a member of the middle school PSO and one of I'm the corresponding secretary. And Carrie and Denise had to report their hours to me. <laughs> 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 and they have both worked 500. Each of them have worked 500 hours this year. So that's anyway. That's really we're really great. Awesome. Yes, we're very <laughs> <laughs> we would not do this by ourselves. I know. <laughs> or at least I wouldn't do it by myself. You could do it by yourself. Well, for what it's worth, I was at the middle school auditorium this weekend for a four-year-old dance recital, <laughs> which was exciting, and I enjoyed it because I'm related to her. But I will also admit that the auditorium really needs your efforts, so um, I'm glad you're focused on that, and I look forward to going there to watch her when she's five. And yeah. That thing's a little, a little easier to sit down on. So. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> yeah, and I would, uh, I would also echo my thanks and appreciation. I mean, you know, we have a wonderful community and a wonderful district, and what makes it wonderful is, is the ability of people to step forward and uh, give their time and talents to the district and to the children, and uh, it's wonderful to see. So, you know, we've got great staff. We, we could put great programs in place, but when you see uh, parent-teacher night and the parking lots filled and so many parents engaged and coming and you see the involvement uh, at this level helping to do things that the district financially can't you know whether it's the auditorium and the hundred thousand dollars worth of gifts I mean you know we're as Kathleen mentioned we, I mean, we just have real constraints and so um, you know, the extra that you you can do really means a lot um, I did have one question and that is um, with the change coming and moving from four school elementaries to one, right, that, you know, has the PSO been looking at that too? We'd hate to lose the energy and, and involvement of so many people, but obviously, I don't know, can you have five co-presidents and, you know, four vice presidents or, you so know? We, we started a conversation this year. Obviously, that's going to be Emily and Kara to continue that conversation. I've made inroads with friends of mine across the country that have different models and there's different ways of thinking about this and how do you do it. There, there's no right answer and it's something we're gonna have to sit down as a PSO in total probably with some of your input on what is the best option for us going from four buildings to one and what does that look like that serves the needs of all of our kids, not just fifth graders or second and, graders. And whatever model is used for Pres or you know, um, the principal, vice principal, if you're going with a two year, two class thing, or however that model goes, seems to be a way to follow down. If you have a principal follow for two years, then you have maybe a president, co-president for that two grades, or, or, or however that may work, but something. Absolutely, and one of the nice things is North Ridgeville <clears throat> they're older kids, but they're doing a similar model to what we're looking at. Of you know, they've got three through eight, so we can pick their brain a little bit as it gets closer, because they'll have eighteen months worth of time under their belt, and they get to make all the mistakes, and we get to come in and look like golden <laughs> childs. So uh, I think there's a lot that can be done, and I think there's a lot of good ideas sitting in this room as well as out in the community for what that looks like. And I think Karen and Emily have some good heads on their shoulders and are pointed in the right direction for making this happen. Yeah, great. Well, we have some runway, so it gives us time to think and right. also look at what other districts have done to see what works, so <coughs> good. I would also like to personally thank all of you for your support this year. It's been great working with you. You're, you're a great sounding board. You keep me humble, and I need to be kept humble, so I really appreciate your honest feedback. You know, I know sometimes you have to ask me difficult questions or hear difficult things, and I just really appreciate that we can have that kind of relationship and have that co that great conversation and dialogue. You know, it's difficult sometimes to make decisions that we have to make district wide. I appreciate you keeping an open mind and hearing, you know, the other side of things and not always, you know, thinking, oh, well, this everyone's saying this, but you know, you, you give me the benefit of the doubt to kind of tell you the other side of things and how we have to look at it from a district perspective. And I just really appreciate um, the relationship that we built over the years, and I look forward to it continuing. And as a token of my appreciation to all of you for the outgoing presidents, there is a big flower pot for you outside the door. So after we enjoy dinner, please, um, if you're an outgoing president, and Philip, thank you for your partnership and your friendship. Um, it's been really great to get to know you personally over the last couple of years, and I know you're going to be stepping away, but 
I hope uh, we continue our friendship. So. I'm just a phone call away. I promise to continue being a pain in your ear. Thank you. <laughs> I look forward to that. <laughs> so, and, and to kind of wrap this up, I want, I want to thank you all. I know you some, with some of the decisions that we've made, and they've been very difficult for us as well. You've taken the hit for us a lot of times with the parents and had to have difficult discussions. And I hope you feel supported. Um, you know, we have Fred who comes and Joelle, but if, if you ever do need something, you are always welcome to reach out to any of us because, you know, we're going into uncharted waters. And so even with the closing of Central, there are people who have done it, but they're not Frexville, Broadview Heights, and we're our own unique group and, and with our own unique needs. And I'm, I'm thankful that you're here because the closing of Central alone is, you know, it, it's a sad thing and it, it's very delicate and it's being handled just the way I can tell you this board would hope it would. I mean, it, and I think everybody, although it's sad and, and, and there are mixed feelings, it's being held, you know, to the level that it should be held to. And I'm thankful that you're in charge of that. And, um, you know, let's keep up the good work because we are a team. Thank you very much. Enjoy dinner. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I may have a motion to go into a recess. Second. Okay. All right. Need a vote. Roll call. How about an aye? Aye. 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 Okay. Let us see. Thank you. For waiting. I apologize for making you wait, but I. So excited to see all of you. Um, we have item six. We have recognition and presentation. A superintendent student advisory board seniors. Okay. So I would like to recognize and thank um, my two senior members of my student advisory council. This is something that I created when I came here three years ago. And the premise is, is that the kids would start when they were in fourth grade and they would stay with me through they graduate. So obviously three years ago, these, these two came in as sophomores and have been with me. My student advisory group meets four times a year. Um, that We've met four times a year. These two are a little upset with me because we added a couple more things that we're doing next year. But they'll, they said they'd come back and visit, right? Yeah, okay, come back and visit. <coughs> and um, they advise me and, and, and tell me what's going on in the buildings from a perspective that only a student can share. <laughs> and some of the things are really great to know and really great to hear. And we've made some um, great progress and got, have gotten some things done. And uh, so I've gotten to know these two, Elena and Jake. And come up, Jacob. I've uh, gotten to know these two very well. Um, and they are in two of the most respectful kids that I will ever meet. Parent, where's Mr. and Mrs. Henning? Yeah, there. What's your favorite team? No? You have raised great, a great son. He's fantastic. You should be very proud of him. But it's been a pleasure to get to know both of you. I will miss you greatly. And I appreciate your perspectives. And please definitely come back and visit. Thank you. Thank you. That's for you. And you know these things are. Put back your phone. Thank you. And next, for the second time in what, a month, we have our world champion robotics team who also happened to be recognized last night at Brexville City Council, correct? We just wanted to come and recognize you again, not only for being world champs, but to also just thank you for what you did last week. Um, for many of you who may or may not know, we had a young student uh, reach out, well actually uh, an organization reached out to Craig to see if they could grant a wish for a student who is sick with cancer, and this child lived in North Olmsted, and so Craig didn't even hesitate and um, actually created this amazing event for this young man who was not who is nine years old uh, got a former graduate to rent it to donate a party bus we went and picked up the student at their house in North Olmsted with our world champion robotics team um, the student still didn't know what was happening when he got on the bus and so the kids shared with him where he where he was going 
When we got back to Brexville, we went to Honey Hut ice cream and had ice cream. Um, and this poor little boy, he had just finished his, first, his last radiation treatment earlier. So, you know, people go through radi radiation, don't necessarily feel well. He tried so hard to eat all of his ice cream. He, it was very sweet. Uh, we then loaded the bus back up. What, what song did we listen to, Michael? A hundred times? The, the Enderman Road. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I there my sleep uh, So we listened to the song. We let the kids pick the music. We got back to the high school. And we had the band who was outside waiting. We had the B-Tunnel all set up, and, they, and he was wheeled through the B-Tunnel and, and listening to our band play. And then all the way down the hallway to the robotics room, um, we were greeted by the SWAT team, which was a little unnerving. <laughs> but it was fine. They had brought their, ro their robots for him to be able to control and ran him through a couple of simulation drills. And then he got his dream to compete against our world champion robotics team. So, not only are we proud of you for uh, being the world champions, but we're also just proud of you for just being great, great kids. So thank you for that. So if you'll come up and get your certificate. had a young um, one of our special needs children who started to choke on a piece of food and before even thinking they came over and performed the Heimlich maneuver and dislodged the piece of food out of the student the ambulance was then called and you know taken just for observation but just amazing your selfless act and we really appreciate what you've done so thank You're you amazing so much. every day <laughs> You are already graduated, so you don't have to listen to me if you don't want to. <laughs> we'll see. How many of you are graduating from your own podcast? We'll see you Saturday. Ready to go. No shenanigans with that robot. Bring the song on, please. I'll bring a speaker with the song. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. So take the circle right now. Don't ride on it. So we have item seven, seven other board business. We have A, Nelson Commissioning. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. No, there it goes. Okay, uh, roll call. No, discussion. Any? No, we're going to be moving forward. Roll call. Mrs. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Dozen? Yes. Mrs. Mack? Yes. Okay, item C, revised board policies. This will be our final reading. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Dozen? Yes. Mrs. Mack? Yes. 
Item E, the then design architecture agreement. May I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Any discussion? Okay, roll call. Mrs. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Dozen? Yes. Mrs. Mack? Yes. Item G, cell phone stipend. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any comment? Roll call. Mrs. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Dozen? No. Mrs. Mack? No. Item A, President's Announcements. Um, a, I don't think I, well, yes. We have the run, which is June 1st. Yes. The uphill, downhill run for mental illness. And I see we had over 150 registrants and there's t-shirts. I don't know if I, who all is registered. Yay. That's awesome. So we're still looking for sponsors and it's not too late to register and it's going to be a wonderful community event involving our foundation and our students. A nice collaboration um, to bring to the forefront the importance of uh, mental health. So that's my announcement. Nine community communications here in the public. Does anyone wish to speak? All right, moving on. Item 10, board committee reports. A, board member committee reports. We have a financial liaison audit committee. No. A permanent improvement committee. Board policy committee. Our job is done with the final reading. Yeah, there we go. I just was going to reiterate, and we put it on the agenda, but just to say publicly that these um, board committee um, meetings are only required to take place twice per year. So even though we might say each year it's not that we're not meeting, we're and we do meet our two times per year, but it, it kind of feels like sometimes we go a long time without meeting, but that's the reason why. I just wanted to make sure it was on, on record to know that. Which, and I'm just asking out of curiosity, since we're on this topic, when <coughs> do you think the next permanent improvement will be Mr. Coe? We will have one next fall, next September fall. or October. Okay, so not until then. If, if okay. you'd like to meet prior to that, just let me know. Okay. Okay, I will. All right. Item 11, District Committee Reports. We have Transportation Appeals Committee. Shame on you if you are. All right, Calga Valley Career Center Report. No, but I, I loved our, the graduation idea that uh, people who are going right into a trade mm -hmm. and you know we took that on ourselves and we had asked CBCC I just want to say the political but we have asked them to do that for years and you followed through you made sure that happened looked like there was a nice attendance yeah. I correct? and we did that what I don't know it was Mark, it was May 9th. Um, May 9th. I, I was in D.C., but got great feedback. I know Fred and Mike were both yeah, there, yeah, and you were there, too. Thank and you. And they, they said that. for the parents, I think it was just tremendous. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not that it wasn't for the kids, yeah. but, but I think for the parents, it was really something for them to be able to you know, see their child going into something and get recognition for it. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, we've got kids going right from high school into CNC operator. Right. <clears throat> They're making very good money. So I shared that with my former board members CBC. at CBCC. Some are still there, and all of them said, what a great idea, even though we all have seen that before. And it was at OSBA, we've seen that. So I'm, I'm hopeful, I, I think it's great that we took it on ourselves, but I feel like that could be something that CBCC you know, brought to us sure. and, and did that for the partners in CBCC. So, I, it's the starting on the calendar for next year. Yeah. So we're good. Yeah, I expect to see it grow too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know other districts are going to be doing that as well. So that that's on our part. This is what we do for a. It's as important, if not more important, than athletic signing day. This is our business. So that's important. What those people are going into for our future. So well, we I'm need also, to continue doing. I'm also that. going to say, Mr. Drypool. I can never yeah, say his last name. name. Um, he did a really good job, oh, like because wow. he was like the MC. Yep. So anyway, for the first time, considering it was the first time it happened, I thought he did a really great job of like 
telling exactly what the kids had done and anyway, so I that's just great. To mention that. <clears throat> Yay. Yay for us. Okay, so we have a safety and security meeting report. Do you want to go, Fred, or do you want me to go? I want Chris to go. I, I, I have a cheat sheet, so. Okay. It was just yesterday. So, I could have had my cheat sheet, too. So we, we, had, a, we, we had a full uh, committee meeting, and it was a full agenda. Uh, we had three uh, speakers present. Uh, we had Officer Chris Nauer present <coughs> Alice training, alert lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. Um, and to date, uh, at the end of this week, they will have trained all of our school buildings on Alice this year. We had stop the, uh, we had a stop the bleed update presented by Dan Schreiber, and again by the end of this week, actually is that tomorrow by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, all of our school buildings will have been trained and stop the bleed. Uh, a side note to that is we have uh, university hospitals donating the stop the bleed buckets, and Dan estimated the value of the buckets and the donation at sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars. There are about uh, um, one hundred and twenty to one hundred twenty-five dollars a bucket they estimate, and we are slated tomorrow morning to have a delivery of around four hundred and ninety-eight buckets, so that there's one in every building, in every classroom, in every open space, and also on the buses. Those are kits, not buckets, at about sixty-dollar value each. So thank you, H. Whenever anyone has an opportunity, didn't mean to. Interrupt. Um, Officer Krasopoulos wasn't able to make uh, our meeting this uh, this month. However, again, Mark Krasnowick uh, did an update on active shooter. Uh, if you're not aware, uh, the city of Brexville will be conducting active shooter training at Central School here in June for a four-day period. Um, there was a lot of conversation amongst the group about uh, collaborating and having multiple uh, departments involved in that. Uh, we kind of left that to the uh, first responders leaderships to decide how they want to coordinate that. Officer Krasopoulos has approached me uh, and, and just started some preliminary conversations about doing a large, larger scale uh, collaborative multi-unit uh, and multi-jurisdiction um, drill next fall similar to what was performed in 2011 or 12. And so we are working in that direction as well. Um, then we also had our Ohio Schools Council consultant, uh, safety consultant uh, report out on uh, tabletop exercises and some pending legislation. Uh, it's called House Bill 123 where they are actually increasing our emergency operation plan requirements. <coughs> and then I reported out on all of the infrastructure items that we are working on and we continue to work on and we improve and enhance and that is our goal is to through training and through our initiatives to improve and enhance our security in the building so again we continue to move to the digital video systems we continue to install additional access control we are looking at uh, putting the GPS, which is a huge security item on school buses. We also have um, the middle school and high school PA replacement slotted. Now that's grant funded, and so we are waiting for those grant funds to come through. We also have an uh, on-site emergency notification system that's going to be installed with the uh, completion of our telephone project which means that if somebody dials 911, we can get a list of folks, building need administrators, district leadership, get a text message that a 911 call was placed from whatever classroom that extension is tied to. So we would all know immediately that a 911 call was placed. <coughs> and lastly, we are doing visitor management system, and that will be rolled out next fall. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, what visitor visitor management? Visit, visitor management. So any visitor that will come to the into a building will be required to show a driver's license. That driver's license will be tied to a national database. And if you're flagged, it'll pop up and you won't be able to go any further. Automatically prints a visitor uh, 
badge with your picture on it and it requires you to come back and scan out so we know who is coming and going to the building. So we're getting rid of that sign-in system. The sign-in system is going away. And this is going to be at all buildings? Yes. And then we've got to set up the, at the three elementaries, those systems then will be relocated to the new building. So one of, one of the things that we did uh, two years ago is uh, we allowed parents to come and sit and join our safety and security meeting. And you know it's been great, and they've offered some great suggestions. Moving forward <coughs> as we get into the construction of our new building, we would like to be able to utilize that committee because of the makeup uh, to talk about some of those safety features at the new building, which might not necessarily um, be something that we want to discuss in front of parents. We mentioned this at the meeting uh, yesterday that, you know, asking about the format of this going forward, parents had asked the question, should we still expect <coughs> to be invited to these meetings? We had said that we would probably continue to have multiple meetings. We've had four per year before. I think last year we started and now we had six. We said that there might be meetings that we ask you not to come because we are going to be talking about specific safety and security features. They seemed fine with that. I don't know, Ellen and, and Fred, if you have that same take, that they were okay with and appreciated the fact that we might need to pull back having parents at that meeting. So I just wanted to get your understanding and your okay. feedback on that if, um, if we can change that format up so that we can have some private meetings with just our security forces. I heard the same thing. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't by that. I agree. So okay. I think you'd need to, right? I mean, it's not right. Well, you out. could develop another committee, but if we already have one that's kind of, you know, got the nuts and bolts of what we need, why, if we can just structure it in a way where we still have parent involvement, but it might just not be at every meeting, depending on what we're talking about. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Direction. Chris, I have a question. Um, I have a question. Yes. So, like, when somebody, like, I've seen that at the Cobb Falls Natatorium, where you, like, do that driver's license and it prints it up. So, let's say somebody is flagged. How is our staff going to handle that? There's a written procedure. There's an immediate notification that goes out so that the building administration is notified immediately that there's a flag and then we have a written procedure for our... So our, our SRO is going to... Okay. Have everybody, everybody that we identify within the building <coughs> that we want to help support that situation will be notified immediately. Okay. Because if somebody became... Come, Combative, and somebody wasn't there, or you know, they're registered sex offender, right? Okay. Yes. So at the high school, those that unit would be located in between the two safety doors, so they wouldn't be able to get access. They would be locked into that safety vestibule. It'll be the same model in the new building that they won't even be able to get past the right. second set of doors if they're flagged. They just won't be have access. To so the what happens at the middle school, for example? Well, and so right now at the middle school and the high school, it will have to be part of you know something in the office, but then they would be already in the office before they could go any other place in the building. You mean the middle school and the middle school and the elementary schools yeah. for the time being, but. You know, it's a better, it, it, it's, sure. it's one level better than, it's it actually is. several levels better than what we have now because there is a database and they will get flagged and there is an immediate notification to your cell phone, to, to the police, whoever you set up. And and how districts have handled it when we ask the question, because Chagrin Falls has it kind of just out in <coughs> their building and they how they've handled it and just said, oh, there's a problem printing your badge, could you please wait to not kind of cue that there's something wrong. So there's a procedure. There's actual, um, you know, a, a sentence that you would say, you'd have the, the uh, people at the building say, and that also would be a delay tactic if somebody did come up that was flagged. And sometimes people come up and they're flagged as possibly a registered sex offender, but if they have a child in the building, that's a whole different level right. of protocol too. So we will work through that training uh, as we implement this. There is a whole training component with people who would be, you know, first in line to meet with visitors. We'll go through that training. We're also gonna have to let Parents know, and in particular, PSO sure. parents, that they need to bring their drivers. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Right. But, yeah. Well, the other th one last question. In the middle school, those the students will sit in there where somebody would scan in. So students will be in there. Are they still going to be <coughs> able to sit in the office? Maybe there's students who are running, sure. you know, papers like that. Well, and we'll have to talk to, I mean, they come in now and sign in and there's students sitting there, so this wouldn't be any different other than you have the extra added security of that it, they're flagged and now we know that the person might have okay. some, a reason not to be there. I'm just wondering if we want to, you know, if we're trying to 
think about this, that might be want to be, there's a lot of students in there. Sure. And if we're going to start doing stuff like that, I wonder, maybe they shouldn't necessarily be in there. Maybe we should rethink where they're sitting so we can make that more of a secure area. I think one of the um, other plans that we have is adding a second a secondary security vestibule at the middle school yeah, anyways. Yeah. And so, you know, again, to get the system in place, just to have it in place right and now. It's and then, all a process. Yes, yeah. and then the longer plan is that you have a, a secured vestibule so that we can put that, that device in there and have that person still locked down before they get to middle school. Are there grants for us to apply for? I, we've talked about this in the past where some people have gotten these grants so, for these vestibules. So, um, there, there are grants out there. The vestibule, I think, would be, we, they're not to that level of funding for so, uh, Like Twinsburg, did they get a vestibule? $400,000. Yeah. I, I could certainly check. I, could I know you check folks that, over there. Because I've had that conversation. Check, yeah. um, our grant that we're getting for the uh, PA system is pretty extensive at $40,000. That's, wow. that's a pretty good size grant, so. Okay. Um, I, I'm not aware of a, of a sure. more consequential grant for security specific. I, I check around and I, I do pay pretty close attention to that stuff. Well, I had that conversation when I was at CBCC with the Twin Twinsburg board president and they had gotten that grant for that vestibule and at the time, I can't remember where that happened here, we were at that conversation, but it was like a $20,000 grant is what I remember. And I don't, that's all I remember. And, and so we, we did get a grant. Um, my first year here for security, and that's where we put all the access control and the buzzer uh, a phones in place. Okay. Um, and that was for twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, and then we got a, a workers' comp grant, and this this grant that we have uh, application in is also through the BWC. So they're they're trying to give us some of our money back. Right. Through the grant process. So. Which I know just we talked about this extensively at our last program. Okay. Well, meeting. thank you. I'm so. sorry. I didn't no, no, that's all. Thank you, Chris. You bet. Okay. So, moving on. School Foundations Report. So, last night was a big night for the foundations, correct, Mr. Martin? Yes. And Mrs. Maggar, you were there as well. You want to tell us about, about the scholarships? scholarships? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was going to do it in my first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's okay. okay. I can do it now. We had uh, senior awards last night. Our seniors collectively at a, at, as a class earned over one million, uh, sorry, it was $15 million. $15 million in grant scholarship and grant funded um, assistance to go to school. And then last night, they were awarded over $115,000 local in local grants, uh, most that funnel through our school's foundation. So. Mm -hmm some great kids getting some uh, great things and great assistance to go to school, so it was pretty incredible. And, and it was many kids started winning multiple. Yes, many kids. Well. Jacob, who was here, he was, his name was called several times last night. It was <laughs> great, but um, they set a record this year for um, the amount of money they gave away, $115,000 to 117 kids. So right. it was a great night. Wow. I think it also broke the length. It did. <laughs> I agree. Yes. Two hours and 40 minutes. <laughs> uh, also, I know Mrs. Firestone will be stepping down as president for the foundation. She did a wonderful job, and that election is coming up this next meeting. Is that correct? Yeah, there's a retreat on uh, June 8th. I don't okay. know if they'll do a normal business at okay. that retreat. But yeah, Julie um, gives us time to sure. let some new philosophies take And then we on. also have an open seat, correct? For the, a trustee is what I remember. Uh, we think, because uh, uh, he wasn't there. He hasn't been there for a few meetings, so we're okay. trying to figure out. So we may have an open yeah. seat. Yeah. We'll be taking feedback for that. If and we are interested. currently collecting uh, evaluations from the grants that were awarded uh, at the beginning of this year, and um, we're hoping to get some more um, teacher apply. Because uh, that's a, what we do it now. We, we apply now, and then they award it convocation next year. That's so nice that we kind of flipped that. So yeah. It's a better yeah, time to apply. Because we were applying at the beginning of the school year. So I know. Okay. Uh, PSO report, Fred? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think my report Good? came on at about 5.30 or 5.30. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
All right. We got a full comprehensive report from uh, our we did. Mr. Phil Chipman. And, um, it, uh, as, as it always is, uh, it's very positive. Uh, there's been good growth in TSOs, and good growth in the amount of money they've uh, been able to raise, and, and the amount of uh, gifts that they've been able to give our school systems. Just Always, it blows me away every time I sit at the PSO. All right. Uh, other board member reports? Okay, hearing none. Superintendent's announcements. I just stole some of your thunder. That's okay. I uh, just want to remind everyone about the, the schedule for central school closing. We're doing uh, a program with the kids on the last day of school. Uh, there's going to be a dance, and then, uh, I'm sorry, last day for students, and then. Practice the 29th? Yeah. yeah. And then we're doing a uh, just kind of a ceremonial program on May 30th. We've invited a bunch of former <coughs> administrators that were administrators at Central to come and speak. We have kids that are going to talk about their memories at Central School, so it should be a really nice program. And then over home days in the city of Brexville on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have different events planned. We are doing a cookout on Saturday from 12 to 4. We're having donuts and coffee in the morning on Friday and on Sunday so there'll be plenty of opportunities for, for people to come and visit the building walk through we're leaving it intact uh, we pushed our moving date to get everything out of there back behind that so that people can actually come in and see the classroom set up the way they would remember them so really a, a nice uh, weekend that we have planned in addition to uh, paying tribute to the school and closing it before the kids the kids uh, PSO purchased the kids t-shirts that say something like same B but new hive class of 2027 very cute for all of the kids so they will be wearing those on, on their dance on the last day so we're pretty excited about that too and it sounds like I was talking to their presence they're doing a whole extravaganza on their front lawn yeah. the bounce house dump yeah. tank they're, they're, it's gonna be a they're big going party. out in style so yeah, for sure it'll be a big one and then as you know we sent out a link to a potential bell schedule for the fall uh, last Friday in an email we had over 720 people respond to that survey uh, the majority of the people being in favor of looking at the new bell schedule of course we always allow people to make comments uh, the survey went out to parents and staff that's who mostly filled out a uh, few people want it later and earlier or whatever but for the majority of the data that we got back uh, about 70 some percent are in favor of doing the new bell schedule so um, just looking for your feedback on that based on that piece of data you had seen the bell schedule you would ask to get parent feedback that's the parent feedback you know do we want to go ahead and make that change for the fall of next year um, and if that is the board's desire to do so we need to get that information out as soon as possible so we can let people know before they leave for the end of this school year Go ahead. I, you're looking for direction right now. I just I want it. Well, it would be great if we could give you direction. It, it, it would be. Great. So you've had. So this is just a circle back. You've had conversations with our union about this, and so they they are feeling okay with that as well. Hey, hey. Leon, president of the <laughs> Brexit Broadway Heights Education Association. Um, we reached out to our membership to get their feedback and then we worked through a solution that would allow the elementary to shift and do an 8 to 4 teacher day with a shift of the student day and that would elongate for the K to 3 by 15 minutes that part of the day but it held constant the teacher contact time that was fourth grade. The elementary teachers gave me a lot of feedback and they felt that getting that extra half hour was very beneficial and they were willing to do that. Um, with the middle school, we have <coughs> fifth grade going into the middle school and the staff, five through eight, gave me feedback and they were kind of split. But the shift there would be from a 710 to 310, uh, yeah, 710 to 310 is what we currently have, and they would go um, 720 to 320 and the kids shift a little bit within that day. Um, at the high school, with a lot of concerns about the after school <coughs> programs that we do with our students, the teachers were okay with the shift of the student day going out, but they really wanted the teacher day ending at 310 because of all of the things that they shift to. So we worked out a compromise and they stayed at 710 to 310 with the exception, once a month the staff meeting that day 
we will be kicked out 15 minutes later. So we created the meaningful tie. That was the compromise. And then four times a year, there are um, floating dates for a meeting so that if we want to do professional development and have that block of meaningful time um, with a week's notice, we'll schedule for that. And we thought that that was a way to accommodate what the parents were saying with what we saw our needs for our students, our families, and so on. So we worked through that. And That's it was wonderful. a bunch of meetings and, and yeah. um, gathering a lot of feedback, but very much um, so that's what we've worked through. But we were waiting to hear from the board no. as to whether or not we could. So, so we needed the busing. We needed to know the busing component right. to make sure that when the student day is supposed to end, that the kids will be able to get out of their classrooms, onto the buses, and so on. Because when teachers have to use that as part of their meeting time and so on, that was like one of the right. few concerns we had was just can we actually move everybody the way they're supposed to? All right, so there you have it. Thoughts? You know, I ask people for their opinion, get a very positive result, and then not say yes. Just forget <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we're all in agreement to make this. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Monteleone, and, yeah. thank, and please thank, you know, everybody in the union for Thanks. really collaborating with us. I know that we all feel that this is a change that we've tried for so long, and it wouldn't be without your cooperation that we would be able to get it done. So thank you You're on behalf of everybody. And thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Um, okay, so there you go. We're moving forward. Good luck with that. <laughs> the devil's in the details. All right, 13, we have superintendent's consent agenda. We have A, an MOU, I, Joyce Dimitro. B, certified recommendations. C, classified recommendations. D, supplemental recommendations. E, approval of superintendent's consent agenda. They have a motion. So moved. Any questions on any of the recommendations? Okay. Roll call. Mrs. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Dozen? Yes. Mrs. Uh, Mack? Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Item 14, superintendents, other business. A, out-of-state trip, Rexville Broadview Heights marching band. B, Alliance for High Quality Education membership. C, approval of superintendents, other business. May have a motion. So moved. Any questions on these two items? I do. Can you just explain a little <coughs> bit about what the Alliance for High Quality <coughs> Education does? Sure. So it's a group of... Um, Typically higher performing districts that belong to the Alliance, they have a very strong political voice uh, down in Columbus and the group will advocate on behalf of our districts that are similar to ours and it really a, a lot around finance. So a lot of the Cup Patterson members that are participating in, in organizing the funding formula are part of this Alliance. So it's really kind of a political group for us to speak on our behalf down in Columbus. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Dozen? Yes. Mrs. Mack? Yes. Item 15, Treasurer's Consent Agenda. We have A, the five-year forecast, May 2019. B, modification of budget appropriations. C, purchase order after the fact. D, financial report, April 2019. E, meeting minutes of April 24, 2019. And F, approval of the Treasurer's Consent Agenda. May have a motion. Okay. Discussion? I think we're going to see the right. Great. Right. Well, thank you for the opportunity to talk about the uh, uh, five year forecast update for the <coughs> month of May. I'm going to start right in and kind of show you the, uh, I'll call it the, the overlay of, of, of the October forecast versus uh, the May update. Uh, first of all, draw your attention, <coughs> most importantly, to you know what's it look like now. Uh, basically, the May forecast versus October. I, I have actually a, a positive uh, $800,000 variance, uh, basically because I overestimated, for the most part, um, salaries and benefits for uh, in the October forecast versus May. So what that uh, <coughs> equates to is 
in the fiscal year 19 here, the blue, uh, I'll call it the third column from the left, that's where you see the 0.8 or $800,000 representation of the positive variance. So revenues minus uh, revenues and expenses minus expenses comparative between uh, forecasts. Um, second of all, uh, I think the, you know, what's this big board telling us? Uh, it really kind of just, again, lists the revenues versus expenses, and most importantly, folks, uh, cash balances and, you know, how healthy is the, is the, uh, in the district, uh, I'll call it the financial scorecard. Um, uh, we are on, on, on good footing. I'm uh, very pleased to announce that uh, we've had some very strong uh, uh, fiscal responsibly uh, people here in the district. Uh, of course, the, the voters back in May of 17 approved a 5.99 mil levy, which we are just now honestly uh, seeing the results because we had about 47 million in, in total revenues. It'll top out at about 52 million. But if you recall back uh, with the tax law changes in December of 17, a lot of folks paid early. So uh, that's why you see it, it looks like it's stagnated and at the top level there in the October forecast and May, uh, but really uh, it did not. And it really is, is, we'll see a total of about 5 million, uh, which you'll see in 20, 21, 20 through 23. Now, what that means is in the past, you know, our, our revenues have really increased roughly just over 2%. Um, Typical after a, a levy is approved, you obviously get a, a big bump in your revenue, but then you know, after you continually receive it, uh, revenues kind of, uh, I'll call it level out, and that's what you see here, revenue, or I should say forecast to forecast. So it really doesn't surprise anybody. Uh, we'll see some changes. Uh, we'll probably see about a 1% growth in total revenues uh, in, in either one of the forecasts uh, because we had a, a, a reappraisal. Uh, we, our, our property values increased about 83 million. Uh, that didn't equate to a dollar for dollar uh, increase, of course, uh, but it actually equated about a $430,000 increase uh, to, uh, to our bottom line for the inside millage of 4.69 uh, mills. So revenues, uh, you know, I, I think are, are, are fairly uh, uh, you know, level. I think what's most importantly here, my third point, where you see a little bit of red, uh, this $800,000 variance, positive variance, really, I'll call, I don't want to say kick the can down the road, uh, but sometimes with a finite pool of dollars uh, and, and growing expenses, uh, that's what happens. And, and, and obviously over the next several years, we're talking you know, three years out here before we really see um, uh, revenues or expenses exceed revenues. Um, it helps now in the May forecast it, it actually makes it fiscal year 22 versus fiscal year 21 where we're going to see a deficit spend. Very important. Then we get down to the bottom line. Uh, you're going to see us peak out um, here in, in the May forecast accordingly at about $20 million in, in cash balances. Um, at the end of the forecast, about $16.3 million. So you know, we could talk about uh, uh, deltas and changes, but that's really the gist of, of what you see here on the big board. Um, the, the forecast is several pages. It has several notes to talk about and kind of break down each one of these items, uh, which I won't get into today <coughs> or tonight. Uh, but what I do want to do is, is review uh, a couple of slides that really drive home this point, uh, but also kind of talk about, you know, we've got central school closing. Um, you know, we're going to, you know, I've got that in the assumptions page about how it's changing the forecast, really not too drastically. As you see here, it's, it's an improvement because of the $800,000 positive variance. If you recall, too, over the last couple of years, folks, last year we had about a $600,000 positive variance, and the year before it was about a million. So um, it's always good to kind of stay on that side of the equation. Um, maybe I don't know if I could use the denominator above the line, um, but we're staying above that line um, very positively. So uh, any questions about the big board before I move on? I mean, I think that, you know, the big takeaway is that, you know, this is this, this revised forecast from October has improved. Mm -hmm. Our financial picture has improved. And again, it's a forecast, there's assumptions, a lot of things change. But if you look at, you know, the, the, the fifth year, FY23, right in October, we were ending at 13.7 million with cash, and this is showing 16.3. Um, so, it, it, you know, it, when we look at this, you know, you're looking at, at what point might the district needs to either look at new revenue or 
per tail expenditures or some combination there of both. <coughs> and as much as we can, you know, keep a lid on expenses and manage this as best we can, you're, you're postponing the need to go back to our taxpayers and ask for more money. And this forecast <coughs> right now has shown a bit of an improvement in that front that, uh, you know, we're a little bit financially healthier in this forecast than we were in October. Correct. <coughs> So it's in, yes. Oh, I just um, this isn't necessarily related to the chart, but um, and I apologize if I was told this and have forgotten. But when does that money from the Geronimo? When do we get that? And what pot, like what Actually, are the parameters about what we can spend that on? Glad you brought it up because I was going to talk about it later. But I, honestly, the, the TIF funds are not included in this forecast <coughs> because. <laughs> That hasn't been. I mean, I did. I didn't input it. I figured we'd talk about that in October because, you know, I don't specifically have a date. Even though we might get okay. it next month or at least the first installment. Um, but, like, what are we permitted to use that money for? I believe we can use it for for anything we want to. I think it's been discussed about using it more towards construction, but I think it's. Um, yeah, I think it, it comes into the general funds. Right, and use it however you want. We can say we're using it for. You know, whatever we want, tennis courts, or but ultimately it's in the bucket, and we can we can get the board can say yes, we want to use this for a specific purpose, or but know, we don't, yeah, we, don't really have one we do not, but soon actually, I mean, it's going to happen. There's going to be a couple of installments, and then there's going to be another one down the road, and so that's all good. Uh, this is also make sure I want to confirm this is general fund only, so. Um, whether those TIF funds are used for permanent improvement, which is would be kind of not included in, in, a, in a financial forecast, discussed most likely, but just not included. This is general fund only. And then do we have any, and, and I think it's probably a fraction of what the numbers are up here, but does anybody have any idea at this point, like how much money we're going to save once we go from the three elementaries to the one? I mean, I know that's down the road. I was just curious. If have an idea about that. Yet. Originally, I put a, a place marker in, after, in October, actually. But again, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're bringing up these questions because you're, you're remembering things here, too. In October, central closing was not on the radar screen yet. That didn't happen until December. So um, what you'll see in another slide here, I'll show you in a minute, uh, with central closing and you know, new buses and new bus drivers and you know a new Blossom Hill School and, and all those things, that's actually um, a little different it's going to be an actual net net increase in the general fund of about 200,000. Um, however, again, because of the positive variance, we still move positively and, and move that, that that deficit spend, you know, to the next year. I, I think um, the general was we. I thought I think we ballparked like 500,000 a building. So okay. if we have four buildings going offline, one coming on, we're like one and a half million, you know. But that's a, you know. That's okay. That's a, I know. I it's think very it's about here or so. And you know uh, some of that, some of what comes into play. You know, there's transportation savings, but what's our transportation model? So we right. talked about getting new buses, and you know what, you know, how many bell times do we want to have? All that kind of thing. We'll all. Didn't we get real conservative and use like 750? We did. That's what I thought. Yeah. So we really, at this point, have built-in savings for when we go from, you know, the the uh, three elementaries and, and central into the combined building. But I think what we have in there is hopefully conservative. But there is some. I think, I think on the campaign we did 500. But it, it, the big question is what's in. So, G. Jeff, do you know what you what did you put in the forecast? Yeah. Right, I, and that's I still actually, a few years out. Right? I had 475. Okay? okay, but I actually backed that back out because most of that was, you know, one less principal at that time, and you know. We didn't have a Blossom Hill School. Again, those are some You're of talking small. about just central, or you're talking about? Yeah. I'm talking about down the road. I, I we, actually, I actually had a place marker in fiscal year 22 originally, um, and most of that was was administrative. Okay, I had 475 in there, okay. but I, I backed it back out because I didn't feel felt that October would probably be a better time with all the movements okay. we have going on right now. So that's why so, guys. So there's, so there's a so there's a you yeah. know there's a very good chance that the numbers will. You know that the expense side will come down more than what we're seeing in this forecast because right. There's some once we, yeah because we don't have it baked in. We don't have <coughs> stuff and actually, baked in. It, and it's addressed actually. Uh, I'll, I notice uh, page nine, a bullet point. I make a mention about 
you know, under current assumptions, um, or I'm sorry, sorry, the last one, operating will be operating deficit in the 22 that was on this, you know, on the big board here, will most likely be muted with this, you know, significant cost savings associated with the opening of the new pre-K five. So I address it in comment, but I don't have, you know, financially. I figure as we get closer to the GMP, and I think October, we, I think we'll have a better feel. Because I honestly would love to sit down and talk, you know, with Chris and um, and, and and Eric and those guys, and kind of, you know, get a more definitive instead of as close as we can. There's still going to be some of a guess, obviously. A lot of personnel moves. I mean, there's going to be a, three years down, two, three years down. A lot is a lot of time. But um, so I want to be prudent in, in, in my approach to that instead of just kind of throwing it out there. With the change in central closing earlier, I thought it was. You know, I thought I wanted to address new bus drivers and you know personnel and, and one last principal plus new Blossom Hill um, rent and all that other fun stuff um, in this in this particular forecast. And then we'll address it I think more fully in, in October um, uh, when uh, with the new pre-K five. But I'm glad you brought it up. If I may, I'll um, I'll move to um, and forgive me if I'm making people dizzy, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> Uh, basically, I'll call this, you know, this slide 20. It talks about assumptions. It really addresses some of the items we've already talked about. But, you know, what really drove, you know, the assumptions I'll let you take a look at. But, you know, we always make assumptions with regards to, you know, collection rates really haven't changed. If anything, including delinquencies, it's probably closer to 100%, honestly. So we've been very fortunate with our, our taxpayers and that they do pay on time and the folks that, that don't pay up fairly quickly afterwards. So we've been very pleased with that. Um, I am actually not also House Bill 166 has not been finalized, the new biennium budget will probably be happening tomorrow, most likely. Uh, Joel, you may even know before I do. Um, but it's, it's something that's popping up. Uh, it's been a, obviously a hot button as it should be with the new governor and what have you. So again, October is gonna be the key to talk about whether we're gonna see, I keep hearing things that it's, gonna, it's not gonna move at all. They're gonna basically not give us anything less, but until we actually have a definitive, I really won't, uh, won't address. But the last few years I've been projecting uh, a three percent decline, um, and, and so that's something we'll talk about in October that may change. Uh, however, the newer modified assumptions that are most importantly, I'll talk about two specifically <coughs> that drove this particular forecast. Is you know I had uh, uh, projected an increase in salaries of about three point seven eight percent. That actually came in uh, right now, as I can tell, uh, between now and six thirty of nineteen, we'll come in closer to two point one. Uh, that's where I'll need to shore up uh, most of my forecast because ex the expense side is really what drove the positive variance and it was all salaries and benefits. So getting used to the, to the new schedules and, and myself refining and, and honing in on that uh, will only improve. And of course, uh, I did make a mention here about the what I just mentioned, one principal retirement, central school closing, coupled with the purchase of five new buses and FY20, projected of a net increase in expenses of just under 200000 you know, give or take, because some of the expenses for Blossom Hill um, just came in, so give or take another five or ten grand, which again is like a little needle. So just a you know a comment too on the the, uh, the salary growth, right? So when you're looking at those percentages, this is not like what per, what's the average percent raise that our staff got. It's just taking <coughs> a gross number that says how much did we pay in salary last year, right. and compare it to how much do we pay in salary this year, correct? And what's the delta? And that's where that comes from. And the reason that's important is because you could have people, you could have staff retire and get replaced with uh, less experienced staff that come in at a lower pay scale. So it's not that you know people are getting a certain amount of a certain raise, but if you have less staff and if you have uh, more experienced staff that's replaced with less experienced staff, that will affect the, the salary number. So it's a gross salary number. So you know, I guess just. Be careful because when you see like 2.1 percent or 3. Point, you know, it's not that's not like well, what's the average raise people got? It's right. the total bucket of how much we spend in salary, which has to do with how you know uh, how many staff do we have and what's their relative experience and where are they from based. Plus, a lot of times, uh, very difficult to predict you know columns and step movements for folks that I mean, it would take 15 people that, that go to school over the summer and come back and. You know, put their put their vote in for saying, "Hey, I moved up." Which is well, great. And that's, other, that's really what's designed. And, and the other really big thing too that we will, you know, we, we will learn as as this time unfolds when we talk about what's going to affect our forecast going forward. It's what is our enrollment trend, 
right? We had enrollment projections, multiple enrollment projections that said enrollment's gonna, you know, it's gonna steadily go down, not a lot, but it's gonna steadily go down. Is that hold true? Does it, does it flatten out? Does it go up? You know, and all of those will impact the finances, right? Because if, if enrollment reverses and starts going up, then all of a sudden, you know, you may need more staff. If it, if it goes down, and it goes down a decent amount, then maybe you need less staff, and so you have some attrition savings. So th those are all kind of some of the, uh, the levers that can have a big impact on the, the forecast. And, and finally, I'll, I'll wrap up with this. This, this actually, the big board, uh, the nice colorful, you know, visual. Uh, this is a little bit more, you know, down in the weeds, I guess, if you will. Uh, forgive me, Gina, for using that terminology, but uh, I know how much you love it when I get into the weeds on any of these items. Um, um, I, I, I say that with Gina just because um, that's a, it's probably more of an inside joke. So I apologize if I was. I know how much you love being pointed out to me, but I apologize. I'm trying to have fun here. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so uh, what this is, is exactly what that, uh, the big board is, but it's it a little bit more uh, refined with regards to you know, what really drove the FY18 changes. And right there, smack dab in the middle, is you know, a decrease uh, versus uh, last October of 500,000 in, in personnel services, a positive variance, and also uh, uh, benefits. Uh, the one thing that, we, that, that I did miss, uh, I wouldn't say miss, but I had actually uh, thought we'd have about $200,000 in severance payments mid-year. Uh, we did not have uh, that. And so that also drove the, you know, the difference or at least the, the forecast. I don't want to call it the forecast miss, but I, I missed that sunshine, uh, so to speak. And, um, you know, but nonetheless, I just wanted to, to point that out. The other couple of things that are, are <coughs> worth pointing out is that over time, this also just gives you the next, you know, fiscal year night, you know, the first, the, uh, the second column, FY19, gives you, uh, you know, an idea of what, what, what really drove the 800,000, because it's all rounded up. What drove the $800,000 in positive variance? So, um, you know, we did have some increase in emergency <coughs> services, and, you know, I'll call it state aid was basically flat, uh, and then supplies and materials also uh, due to some software and some custodial things that uh, we didn't foresee. But it did, um, you know, move the needle a little bit. But again, it didn't hurt us because we, you know, I basically, you know, over, overshot the uh, salaries and expenses. And we also had, um, you know, we've had some, some pretty good, our interest income really drove the top line there. The others were pretty, pretty marginal, but, uh, but as our balances go down over the next couple of years, uh, I don't foresee interest income to be, you know, uh, breaking records, uh, I guess, or, or, or being a little bit too unpredictable as we, as we draw down our, our, um, our, our balances. Uh, any questions about this board here? <coughs> Great. Uh, any questions in general? All right. That completes my report. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so more of a comment on what Mark started with the um, you know, enrollment. That Just even talking to you, Fred, about the home sales that you've seen in your neighborhood and the amount that I've seen in mine. and. Fred noticing young families, yeah, moving, yeah, this was something we tried to get a, a handle on, and it is definitely going to be a moving target that I don't think anybody could actually have predicted accurately, and we saw that two times in a report, so. Well, we still don't know we'll what's going to happen. We still <laughs> don't know what's going to happen. Can we have an update on the kindergarten but, numbers? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I was going to be in your update on Friday, okay. but yeah, we have. We're, uh, we've got we've got 35 slots in half day only left. Full day is completely closed at all buildings, and so we are going into the summer with 35 half day slots only. I'm seeing high school kids leaving and babies coming in. I know. Uh, yeah. So yeah, also before we take a vote, if I could, I mean we're still on the my consent agenda too. Um, uh, I do want to thank Bonnie um, for. Uh, the month of May is salary notice and um, review for the next fiscal. So, um, you know, I, I've appreciated her partnership in, in pointing out. Uh, uh, we really got together. It was really kind of a, it was a joint effort to kind of talk about, you know, what's it going to look like this year. We have about 64, 65 folks still on on, on A, and uh, making sure the the uh, salary uh, guides uh, look uh, proper for for those folks, but also making sure our folks on B. 
uh, are, are correct. And so, you know, we had a few discrepancies, as you can in a, in a sizable uh, district like ours, but nothing that we couldn't handle that we've already handled. And so thank you for uh, your mathematician skills, first of all, and <laughs> also for the... Studies, please. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, I know, but don't you surprise me. me. <laughs> as I said last year, um, a treasurer's license may be some days in your car. <coughs> Um, but no, I just wanted to publicly thank you for, for our partnership and, and continuance. So thank you. All right. Okay, roll call. Mrs. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Dozen? Yes. Mrs. Mack? Yes. Okay, may I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Roll call. Yes. Mrs. Kramer? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Dozen? Yes. Mrs. Matt? Yes. We will now be in executive session. This motion is to enter yeah. into executive session for the consideration of the appointment, appointment, employment, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official per board policy 0166. Thank you.